Hi, my name is Tom Gustafson. I'm a physical therapist and the clinic director of our downtown location. So I think first off, we should talk on what is a physical therapist. And at the Center for Physical Rehab, we are a predominantly an out, outpatient orthopedic physical therapy practice. And uh, before I dive into what does that entail, what does that mean, I should mention that there are, there are multiple types of physical therapy that, that are out there. And, and that can range from spinal cord injury, brain injury, stroke rehabilitation. Uh, you can get into the inpatient, the, the in the hospital, acute, acute care type of, of physical therapy, cardiovascular. There's lots of difference and probably some that I didn't even name. And then within all those subspecialties that exist. But for our purposes, talking about physical therapy, I'm gonna talk more about the orthopedic physical therapy that, that I practice in and that, that we practice in our company. So regarding the schooling for physical therapy, it's a three-year postgraduate degree. So it's a three-year doctorate in physical therapy. So it's a clinical doctorate, DPT. And it is, uh, programs are typically divided into about 80% of the program being didactic learning, with 20% of it being uh, clinical, uh, on-site learning. Speaking, and different schools kind of split it up in different ways as far as how they, how they split up their, their rotations and when you do them. But speaking for Grand Valley, which is where I went, the, um, the rotations were split up into a five-week rotation in your first year, a six-week rotation in your second year, and then three nine-week rotations in your third year. Uh, <clears throat> with regards to the, uh, the admissions, it's a pretty competitive program. They're, they're fairly competitive programs to get into with higher uh, required GPAs or higher average GPAs. So above, <clears throat> I, I can't speak across the, the entire country where they're at, but I believe Grand Valley's uh, entry GPA is somewhere in like the three, the average like 3.7 to 3.9, somewhere in that range. So it's it's a pretty competitive program to get into. And uh, class size around 60. <clears throat> now it was about 44 when I graduated in 2012, uh, <clears throat> but they've increased the, the size of the program at, over time as there's been more of a demand for physical therapy in the, in the healthcare environment. So my path to becoming a physical therapist started well, probably before high school. I, I grew up always very interested in, in exercise and fitness and the human body from a muscular standpoint and, and understanding it from that, uh, from that standpoint. But in high school, uh, I really didn't have much direction. I didn't know what I wanted to do or where I wanted to go or how I was gonna apply anything towards a career. And, and I knew I didn't want to go into the uh, into the health professions such as uh, physician or nursing or PA or, or anything else for that matter. There was really nothing that stood out. I didn't know what I wanted to do or how to apply what I was actually interested in. And the first class that I actually liked in high school was my anatomy and physiology class. And it was the, it was the first class I actually really applied myself and enjoyed studying, enjoyed learning these things. And I remember my teacher at the time he, uh, he reached out to me, he sought me out and, and, and asked me if I had any interest in physical therapy as a career. And I had, I had heard of it a little bit in the past and didn't know a ton about it, but he uh, went out of his way to connect me with one of his friends who was a physical therapist. And so I actually got to do some observation. I went in and spent a couple of days with a physical therapist and saw that, okay, yeah, this is how I can start to apply the things that I'm actually interested in. And so that, that really planted the seed that then in the coming years, once I, that was probably my junior year of high, of high school, uh, and once I got to, to college, that's when I knew, all right, this is the route I wanna go. This is, this is the direction that I wanna go uh, with my career. And so from there, it was really uh, getting involved in the pre-physical therapy club and, and talking to counselors and figuring out what's, what's the coursework that I need to do? How do I, how do I set myself up for success to get into, into PT programs? Um, and yeah, and then from there, it was really just learning a little bit more, a little bit more over time. And I mean, even through graduate school, <clears throat> it continued to learn what the career was and it realizing more and more that, yeah, this is what I really want to do. And I'll even say that to the, to this day, I still, it becomes more and more solidified over the years of just how, how much I, I enjoy this profession and how valuable this profession is to me. Uh, as well as as what it brings to other people, so uh, 
and to now ultimately be in a place where, I, where I'm working in a management position as a clinic director is kind of an evolution of the career even further. But, but yeah, that was really my path that got me kick-started in the direction of physical therapy. Regarding the, the skills that are, are critical for, uh, for being a physical therapist, I'd consider that one of the biggest ones is just personal interaction abilities. Because so much, so much of the, the ability for a person to heal and to recover something from something comes from the uh, ability to develop trust between the therapist and the patient, and for them to be able to do that quickly, and uh, and doing that through building relationship and, and doing that through conversation and being able to to listen really well and to hear what the person where this person is coming from and hear where their um, their made, their big issues are and. And to be able to read between the lines a little bit of, of things that they're saying and get to the heart of, of what's going on. So that those human interaction skills, the ability to, to develop trust quickly, um, and to be able to, to critically think through problems, because there's a lot of different factors that need to be considered when you're, when you're working through any sort of case with a patient. And to be able to identify and, and to think through what's pertinent here, how do they all work together, how do they tie together, uh, that's a big one. So I'd consider it, it when you're looking outside of all the technical knowledge that, that's required as a physical therapist, I would consider just human interaction skills, really good listening skills, and the ability to critically think and to integrate a lot of different components and, and tie it together to, to really develop what is going to be the best plan of action. I'd consider those among the most important skills. A factor that most people are going to be considering if they're deciding, is this a career for me? is going to be the pay and how much is the, how much how much can I count on getting paid and the US uh, Department of Labor statistics in 2019 the median pay for a physical therapist in the US was 89,000 there is a large range that's the median um, and unfortunately I don't have the mean of that but but the, it, it's going to fa factor in all the states in the in the country so higher cost of living states as well but it's going to vary very very much depending on uh, if you're an entry-level therapist versus a senior-level therapist, if you're in management, if you are in upper management, it, there's there's a, a large range uh, that exists within that. But the median the median pay in the U.S. is eighty nine thousand. So the likes and dislikes. Uh, I think the likes are. I think the likes. It, it's an incredible job. It's an extremely rewarding job you are working with people and you're seeing them. Uh, some people who take longer, you get to see their gradual improvement over time and you get to see them return to a life that they, they've wanted to live. So it's extremely rewarding in that regard. And with some people, it's a much shorter, a much shorter stay and you're able to see rapid changes in their life and rapid changes in their pain and they're able to, to get back to all the things that they love to do. So that's, a, that's an easy like about this job is it's just extremely rewarding and, and uh, you get to meet so many people that you otherwise wouldn't meet uh, in that process. I'd say that's probably the biggest like of this job. Uh, along with it, it's just you're always learning, always growing, you're always being pushed to, to learn something new and to apply some new knowledge and, uh, and you get humbled quite a bit when you realize you don't know it all. And, and, and then you have to learn some more and you have to build, so, so it's, it's a lot of fun and it's challenging at times, but it can be a lot of fun to, to continue to learn new things and to adapt to, to um, changing knowledge in the field. Uh, so those are a couple of things I really like about the job. And as far as dislikes, I think you're gonna get this from just about any therapist and probably anyone in any health profession or probably most jobs in general. It's the documentation. And that is what it is. It's a part of the job. It's necessary for payment. It's necessary for our tracking of our care. Um, but uh, you know, would it be easier if I didn't have to document all the things I did? Yeah, sure, it would be. And so that, I guess I consider that among uh, probably the dislikes of the job. But, you know, the, I, I'd consider this to be, I, I'm really grateful to be in the position I'm in because there are so many positives in this job and so many things that are enjoyable that outweigh kind of the, the daily, uh, the daily um, kind of grind pieces of it.